my iPad has died, unfortunately. I all my notes from here. <laughs> Didn't think about that when I uh, put that on there with the camera. Right. So, obviously I've got an agenda of things I want to tell you and share you, but is there any questions that you guys have got that you want me to make a point of bringing up or answering anything like that? Not at the minute. Not the minute. Okay. Anybody else? No? Okay, cool. Right, so, the point of today, or the, the discussion is, common dietary and training mistakes that people make. And um, they don't know that they're making them. Maybe, maybe they do, they don't care. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna divide this into two sections, all right? So we've got diets, all right? And involved with diet is everything nutritional, okay? So diet, nutrition, anything you put in your mouth, okay? And then on the other side we've got training. All right, and everything that pertains to training. Now there is some crossover with this, with this, tiny little bit, but, okay. So we'll start with the food side of things, all right? And the first mistake that I generally see people make when it comes to the nutrition side of things is not logging what they're eating. Daniel, can I just... Is that still, is that still playing? I'm yeah. off. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, you know still, what, I'm half right? dancing and half listening. Half dancing and half listening. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. I thought it was actually, I, I turned it down, but I thought it was moving about there. You ain't got troubles with your hearing, bro. Well, I don't know if you, if you know you've got problems with your hearing. I have problems with my hearing. It's great though, no, you turn your hearing aid off. I've got my head on the pillow, I can't hear anything. <laughs> that could be useful though. It's really useful. <laughs> Although it does get a bit tiresome because what happens is, you put your head on the pillow, the, the way I'll, the, the, uh, not many of you know the story of how I actually realized I was deaf, but basically, because it happened over time, and I'm left there one night, and I've got my head on the pillow, and I always sleep right side down, like this. And she's in the back of it, and I'm like, what? And it, it dawned on me that every time she spoke, I had to pick my head up off the pillow to hear what she was saying, and then like, the, the light bulb went off, and it was like, surely I should be able to hear you, mm -hmm. like, with the other ear. So the next day at the class I'm testing it, I've got these like 25 people in front of me and they're like, down and up and down. And I've got music playing and I'm like, no sound, oh. normal sound, yeah. no sound. I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> <laughs> Problem here. Right, okay, so, all right, so first and foremost mistake is not logging on some level what you are eating, all right? At any point, so whether you're just starting out, you've been doing this for a while, or any of that stuff, right? If you're not writing down, or you're not keeping track of on some level of what you're eating, then it can be very, very easy to over-consume, or under-consume, or not hit your targets that you need to be hitting in order to get the results that you want. So think of it as like, you know when you go to get your card detail, or your, you know, your MOT, and he sits there and he does a full analysis of you and he goes, this is warm, this is shock, this is this, this is this, this is this. All right? And he goes, how many miles a year do you drive? Yeah, I don't know. He goes, well, you, that's how many you've done. Right? He's got it written down on your, uh, your, your mileage count. With the body, if you're not writing down or not keeping track or not at least aware on a level of what you're consuming, how do you know that what you're doing is or isn't working, or what to change? And the answer is you don't, okay? Because not really, very, very few people eat the same thing, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and snacks. And the few people that do, are the ones that are usually doing food prep. All right, so yesterday, went to Asda, weekly shop, which involved 30 eggs, 10 packets of salami, <laughs> Eight chicken breasts, six packets of rice, two uh, six peppers, six courgettes. So breakfast and lunches. Guess what? I know exactly what I've got planned. I know exactly what I'm going to eat. Why? Because I eat the same thing every day. All right. Is that not boring? No, you put different seasonings in the food and stuff like that. 
and I alternate week to week. So next week I'll be on stage. All right. So track your food. Write it down. All right. You don't have to do it. You know, you can do it on the hook. You can do it on my fitness pal. You can do it writing it down. You can do. You can take photos, but have some method of, of tracking that allows you to actually know where you're where you're going wrong. All right. Or be our awareness because the second you're aware you can actually make changes to it while you're unaware you've got your head in the sand you're you're you're, you're fighting yourself and this is hard enough as it is okay number two so my bottom here okay, so you're doing two. you're doing the opposites of what you should should be yeah, so basically that's not like a mistake, yeah. it's not yeah. like yeah. Okay? In very simplistic terms. Okay, next one. Not eating enough protein. Alright? Now it's not that carbs are bad, it's not that fats are bad, it's not that protein is everything. Okay? But protein, as an example, in Greek it means it comes from the word the Greek word proteinus, which basically means a primary importance or first. And the reason why it's so, so important is because you use proteins to repair, regenerate, and remanufacture all of your damaged tissues. Okay? So I was having a debate with uh, a gym member the other week, and we were talking about proteins and fats and carbs and all that kind of stuff. And the interesting thing is that most people aren't aware that there are a sense of, um, yeah, I use the word essential. Essential basically means you can't make it in the body. You have to ingest it. All right? So if something is essential, you can't make it in this, you've got to put it in. So there are essential amino acids. They're proteins, okay? So amino acids are the protein or the building blocks of protein, okay? And there are essential amino acids that you basically, if you put those in, your body can make the others. If you don't put them in, your body can't make them, okay? So as an example, carnitine is an essential amino acid and its highest concentrations are found in meat. You don't get a lot of carnitine in uh, vegetable-based proteins, unfortunately. It's just one of those things. It's harder to get from vegetation. Okay? Its primary uh, use is in the brain. So you want your brain to work better? You've got to have carnitine. Right? Which means if you're a veggie, but if you are veggie, then you've got to make sure that you know how to food combine to get that level, those levels up to where they're supposed to be. All right? Being meat eaters is easy. It's just a seafood diet. You see, eat it. I made a joke a few years ago. I put it online. I said, from now on, I want to, I want to go on a vegetarian diet. And Kelly said, you, you, you just eat a steak. I said, yeah. So from now on, I'm only going to eat vegetarians. <laughs> All right, so get enough protein. Oh, don't worry about it. Um, so get enough protein. Okay, it's actually really hard, believe it or not, for most people to hit their protein amount. Okay, so I'll give you an example just of the maths. Right, so I have 85 p kgs. All right, 85. Now, if you turn that into pounds, it's just times it by two for easy maths. So it's 80, so it'd be 170, right? It's roughly, as a rock bottom minimum, one kilo, that's right, one gram of protein per pound of body weight. And some people actually need two, right? Depending on how much muscle mass, activity in the body, and all that kind of stuff, right? So I've got to hurt 170 grams of protein a day. Now, if you were to get that from eggs, well, there's seven grams of protein in an egg, and if you've got to hit 170 grams of protein a day, just from eggs. How many times does seven go into 170? That's a freaking lot of eggs, right? <laughs> All right. If you were to eat that many eggs, right, you would be in ketosis because you'd hit your cal your calories for the day, and you wouldn't need any other anything else. All right. I wouldn't suggest eating that many eggs in one go. But... <laughs> Neither do anybody just sitting nearby to you either. So. So not enough protein, that's the next mistake. Okay? Now, the 
argument I've heard before when it comes to protein is that, well, if I eat that much, that much protein, I'm, not, I'm gonna go over my calories. No, you're not, okay? So if I were to eat, let's just let's round it up and say I had a 200 grams of protein a day, all right? And I'm inactive, I set my tush all day long, and I need 1,500 calories a day, but I don't need any energy food because I'm inactive. All right, so 1,500 calories a day, and, I own, and, I, and I've got to hit 200 grams of protein because whatever, for whatever reason. Okay, that's 800 calories. That's all it is. So I've still got 1,200? A few on 2,000, yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, 1500, so 800, 700. 700. So I've still got 700 calories to go at. All right? Without going over. So I'm only going to get fat eating up protein. Oh. In fact, maybe I don't lose weight because I'm only eating 800 grams, 800 calories. Now, there is some that when you eat, you don't actually just get the protein, you get some fats with that. All right? So the calories would be a little bit higher. Right, if you went from if you went for steak, without looking at the numbers exactly, you'd probably be at about a thousand calories a day, but you'd still be under. All right. Dan, are there any, any dangers in having too much protein? Only if you're dehydrated. Just one second. <laughs> Do that afterwards. <laughs> Awareness. <laughs> um, yeah, only if you dehydrated. It has been written, although I've never seen the empirical evidence and the scientific studies that actually prove it that having high amounts of protein will actually damage the kidneys unless you've got a kidney problem. Okay. Right? So if you've got kidney disease, and you, well, the whole point is to put less strain on those systems. But if you're well hydrated and you're healthy, then you should be absolutely fine. Right? You know, I mean, we are designed to eat. Yeah. There's there's loads of different diets out there. There's like the food combining where you're sorry non-food combining, so you only eat protein at certain times of day and stuff like that. And the the argument and the answer to those is this: that's not how we evolved. Right? We're a survival species. That's why we can we can eat pretty much anything, and we will keep going for an amount of time. Our bodies will run on anything. Right? But we're talking about trying to, this is where it differentiates between the goal and survival. Because we don't want to just survive, we want to have healthy bodies, keep our body fat in check, have good quality muscles, all that kind of stuff. Look aesthetically pleasing, whatever that is for you, right? So you, you're, asking, you're asking your body to provoke a response and take it a certain way. And when you do that, that's like, okay, I, I want to go this way. Right, you've got to head in that direction then. Yeah, it's like um, when we were on holiday, um, every day we went out and left. So we walked out of the hotel, we turned left. And one day we go, well, we'll go right today because it's something different. And we, we, we went right and it was like, yes, no, we won't go right again. <laughs> so the next day we woke up and was like, where are we going today? We went out and left. <laughs> right, so we went out and went left, right? Now if there's a shop to the right, which way have we got to go? Right, right? There's no way I can go that way and end up in that direction. So when it comes to the body, it's about, sometimes you've got to remove the emotional component of, I don't like X, Y, or Z, yeah? You should see some of the, 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 the you know, you look at the, the top athletics, uh, not top athletes and uh, bodybuilders in the world, and they will do things and eat things and drink things that you look at and go, do that. And that's the reason why they're at the top of the game, because they're willing to do the things that most people aren't willing to do. So sometimes it's like Haley hates sprouts. She just has them, but they're good for her. Yeah, on a digestive basis and fibrous basis, and they're full of vitamins and minerals. All right. So every Christmas, sprouts come out. Right. One, two, three, four. I don't want four like you're eating four. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We've all got to do stuff we don't want to do. All right. But when it comes to your protein, there's lots of different choices. Fish, meat, white meat, dark meat, uh, red meat, yeah? Okay. Okay. 
the three. And this is going to sound obvious, but it is a mistake. All right. Eating too much. All right. It is a mistake that people make on the diet. You think they think they need more than they do. Right. But this brings it back to the food tracking thing because they don't know what's in them, what they're eating. Yeah. And food labeling these days is very, very clever. All right because it doesn't always give you the information that you require, right? So you look on some things and it'll say, uh, this is the amount of calories per portion. And in that packet that you're about to eat, there's three portions, right? But you look at the back and you're like, oh, it's only 200 calories. Nope, six, All right? Or the other one is, I'm burning 2000 calories a day Therefore, I'm allowed 2,000 calories a day. Yeah? Well, the other one is eating a low amount through the week and then topping up a weekend to the way you, you, you basically you've overconsumed and you've eaten through your deficit. A few months ago, I was working with one of my clients, and uh, at the time, I was seeing him once a month. So, once a month, did his program, assessed him, all that, all that jazz, and then he would do his routines in the gym, and then the following month, I'd reevaluate him. And um, between these, these two particular readings, and I don't know why he'd done it, because it's almost like it, it, it turned a switch off in his head that he understood something. And um, he hadn't lost any weight at all. And I wrote his training program, so I know how freaking hard it was. <laughs> I know how hard he was training. And uh, I said to him, right, what have you been eating? He said, well, on non-training days, I eat this many calories, because that's when I'm burning, and on training days, I burn 500 calories in a workout, so I've been eating extra 500 calories. Right. Okay, so where's your deficit? What? So where's your deficit? Where's the, where's, the, where's the drop in the calories that's gonna provoke you to lose weight? He went, shit. <laughs> and he went, so this, this month's for nothing. I said, well, no, you've got fitter and stronger. He said, you're not just any weight. <laughs> Now, if that's the goal, gaining weight or maintaining weight is the, is the goal, then that's fine. There's an old adage, uh, there's a saying on uh, Facebook, and it's, uh, it's a meme, sorry. And it says, I don't exercise because I want to be healthy. I exercise because I like to eat a lot. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number four. All right, now this is a big one. Shopping whilst you are hungry. Yeah. That is a fatal flaw. All right, you do that, and you do that, and you will put things in your basket that you do not even want, need, or wonder when you get home. You're like, why? like the few, few days later, and you're like, why did I even buy that? Right? Because when you're hungry, right, really hungry, you will eat anything. Right? If you are really, really hungry, right. Yeah, I mean, I've been around some moments that have been famished, and they'd be like, open the fridge, and there's nothing there apart from butter, and it's like, can I chop up butter and eat it by itself? <laughs> yeah, all right? Or I put butter in coffee. That's actually, believe it or not, butter in coffee is actually quite nice. Bulletproof coffee. All right? It also seeps your hunger really well. It sounds vile, but if you try it, you've got to make it the right way. It's not just as simple as... Uh, you know, putting a, not a knob of butter in your coffee, you've got to liquidize it to really get the effect. Um, but it satisfies your hunger very quickly. Why? Because it's high in fat, all right? And one thing that, um, I think it was, uh, it was in the early 90s and the 80s, I think what happened was there was a, there was a fat ban where all the kung fu foods were pulling the fat out of their food, but they had to make it taste better so they could crank the sugar levels up. And what they found was that when you remove fat out of people's diets, a lot of fat, they have a tendency to eat more because they're not as satisfied and their blood sugar regulation goes completely skew with. All right? So if you're hungry and you're about to go shopping, have a bulletproof coffee. No, you don't have to have a bulletproof coffee. Right? But have something to eat before you leave the house because you will actually feel and shop better. 
right? You're not going to be, you know, reaching around the, the supermarket. Or as soon as you get to the supermarket, walk in, grab something that is that you it's going to balance you out, eat it, and then carry on your shop. <coughs> you are sorry. <laughs> and don't pay for it. <laughs> Say that he works for a supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> it's you. <laughs> yeah, it's really funny. I remember the first time. I think I was a kid. The first time I saw someone, and they were like, they, they were obviously eating whatever they'd eaten on the way round. They got, I ate that on the way round. I was really hungry, right? And so they scanned the label, obviously, because they wanted to pay for it. Um, and then I remember. Like, this was going for quite a few years. I was like, oh, I'm absolutely starving. I was like, can I do that thing? So, like, can I eat it and then pay for it afterwards? I suppose, technically, if you've not left the supermarket, it's not stealing yet, is it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, next one. Number five. Okay. Going for too long in between your meals. Okay? Now, depending on your metabolism, so if you've got a slow metabolism, if you've got a fast metabolism, this does vary person to person, all right? So what is long for you may be not long for other people. I mean, if I go for more than 60 minutes without having something in my stomach, then I'm starting to look at what I can devour, right? Other people will go for six to eight hours and they'll won't even care, all right? But then they'll eat 1,500 calories in one go, all right? That's not a bad thing. Some people function better on one meal a day. Okay, other people need 18, like me, okay? So the trick with this is it's not so much long meal times, it's long for you, all right? If you have an understanding of what your glucose or blood sugar regulation is like and what works the best for your body, okay? Once you've got that down, stick to it, all right? And it's not just a thing of feeling necessarily hungry, but it's feeling what's going on inside your body, all right? Jittery, cold, low blood sugar, you know, any, anything that associated like, you know, I feel like I'm not actually balancing my system out here, all right? But then you've got to go revert back to the first one and go, right, well, what did I eat before, okay? Because there wasn't enough there, or there wasn't the right macronutrient balance there, then you may have eaten, burnt through it, because, <clears throat> you know, let's say it was a punnet of strawberries, there isn't that much calorific value, there's no protein, there's no fats, it's just fructose and water. All right, a bit of fiber. So if you've devoured that and gone through it and there's 100 calories in there and five hours later on you're like, well, I ate that big pint of strawberries in hell. I'm like, oh no, no, it was five hours ago. No wonder I'm hungry. All right, so make sure that you're eating right for you, you know, on, a, on a frequency basis right for your body. Okay, it's a big thing with intermittent fasting and it's kind of come and gone and come back again. Um, you know, do I believe intermittent fasting is bad for you? No. Do I believe it's right for some people? Yes. Can I, can I, have I tried it? No. I didn't get past an hour. Okay. Number six. more than you do, okay? When you eat a lot, the belly stretches. When you eat less, the belly shrinks. If you're used to eating big meals and you suddenly cut down, you will feel naturally more hungry, okay? But it doesn't necessarily alter metabolism, okay? So the size of the stomach has got nothing to do with the, the metabolic rate, not on a big basis anyway. Yeah, a bigger stomach will burn a few more calories, yes. All right, you cold. Another coffee. Um, do you want my jumper? <laughs> do some uh, jumper yeah. jumps. <laughs> oh. um, but if you uh, if you have a misunderstanding about how many, it's a bit by like my client did, right? If you have a misunderstanding about how many calories you're burning and how many you need for your goal, okay, and this. It, it pertains to weight loss as well as muscle gain, all right, or fat loss and muscle gain. All right? If you're trying to increase muscle mass, then you've got to overconsume. All right? You don't have to overconsume a lot, but you have got to be in a surplus, otherwise you're not going to gain muscle mass. 
right? Um, I had a nine month long debate with Dave about this. And uh, I, I finally outmaneuvered him, right? So he said, we've got this thing of bulking and cutting. You can cut and bulk at the same time. I said, no, you can't. Just, okay. No, you can't. And I said, he said, yeah, you can. I said, no, you can't. Because you have to be in a calorie deficit to lose fat. And you have to be in a calorie surplus to gain muscle. I said, the trick is to not lose too much muscle while you're doing your cut. And the trick is to not gain too much fat when you're trying to put muscle mass on. Right? But, okay, it's like... Um, when a woman's pregnant, and this, you've heard the phrase, I'm eating for two. No, you're not. You're, 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 you're a little, you, your second version of you is this big at the moment. How many calories do you think that thing's burning? Yeah? I think it's, uh, and Haley's done, some, uh, done a course on this, and I think it's, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's something like in the second or third trimester, you're up to an extra 300 calories a day. That's it. Right? Now, if you think about it this way, right? Those 300 calories, where are they coming from? Are they all from Mars bars? Right? Or is there a mixture of protein, fats, and carbs that are required for your body to manufacture another body? Right? It's a, a mixture. You need some chemical energy for the calories or for the carbs. Yeah, of course you do. Right? And as you get heavier, you're going to have to work a little bit harder because you're going to carry the weight around. Right? But do you need all that from sugar? Do you need to be eating for two? No. All right? When you're trying to lose weight, you've got to have that deficit there. All right? So you've got to have an understanding. This is why the in-body works really, really well, because it gives you a baseline of where your basal metabolic rate actually is. All right? Then you've got to start adding in activity. You know, if you sit down in your tush all day long, that's not that active. Yeah? I mean, joking aside, I do know people who burn more calories when they're unconscious than they do when they're at work. Because when, when they sit there, they're going, like this. Whereas when they're asleep, they're tossing and turning and actually physically moving around. Right? And you do burn calories when you are asleep. Right? You, do, you don't cease to exist when you're un unconscious. Right? Your heart, your lungs, your liver, your kidneys, every all those organ systems, and that's where you burn the most amount of energy anyway. Right? That's why it's basal metabolic rate. That's why if you take basal metabolic rate, it's a big number, and then you go, well, that hour in the gym burned 300 calories, right? Well, your basal metabolic rate is 2,000, yeah? All you've done is you've cranked your metabolism up for those hours, or that hour, and then it comes back down again, yeah? So you take the calories of your basal metabolic rate and the calories of your exercise program and what you've done in the day, moving around, that's your metabolic rate for the day, right? Well, that's 2,000 calories, right? How much weight do you want to lose? 10 stone. Okay, no problem. How fast do you want to lose it? Yeah, if you're, if you're saving 100 calories a day, and there's 7,000 calories in a kilo of fat, it's going to take a long time, uh, 100 calories a day, to eat through 10 stone. One of my clients, he's, on, uh, he's just finished now, uh, it's called Aladir. It's a weight loss program, and it's doctor-led, and everybody can do it. Uh, he had to go for a regular blood test. He was on a super stringent program. I mean, the, the list, it was, uh, he showed me the thing. It was, this is your unlimited veg. You get 50 grams a day. Unlimited veg, and you were allowed 50 grams of that a day. So that's the joke. It's unlimited, but you were only allowed 50 grams. <laughs> right? And this is your limited veg. You are allowed 25 grams. I said, what's the difference between the unlimited and the limited? They was like, I don't know. They, they couldn't tell me. <laughs> I said, right, okay. You but, could find in the next phase they become unlimited. Essentially, right? But in five months, he's lost 45 kilos. Oh. Right? That's just short of seven stone in five months, right? And, you know, but he was super strong. And he was still training, right? He was still training. We didn't train the first two weeks until his body adjust. But I had to radically alter what I did exercise-wise with him because his the training program that I had him on beforehand, which was designed to get rid of a load of glucose out of his body because he was eating it, I didn't need to do that because he didn't have any glucose in his body to start with because he wasn't eating it. 
right? When he needed to do X, and it sounds drastic, but, uh, and I had a conversation with Jack, and he said, was well, that really healthy for his organs? I said, no, but now he's walking around at 169 kilos. Yeah, short-term stress in the system, to bring that weight radically down, has motivated him and kickstarted him now to, right, okay, now I've got that down, and now I can do the next bit. He needed that, yeah? Not everything works for everybody, right? I could not, you know, not that I had that many calories to burn through a day anyway, but uh, to, to lose, but, you know, there are numerous people that could not do what he's done. And there are tons of people that should not do what he's done, right? Okay, number seven. Not understanding what macros are, or what they do, or what they're for, or the different ones. Okay, so there's four macronutrients, proteins, fats, carbs, and alcohol. Alcohol is actually classified, it, it shouldn't be, but because of modern society and how we consume it, it is a macronutrient now, all right? It's a major nutrient in people's lives. Okay? There are no macronutrient requirements for alcohol, unfortunately. <laughs> you don't need them. Yeah, you can live without them. All right? If you're not sure, there's four calories per gram of carbohydrate, and there's four calories per gram of protein, and there's nine calories per gram of fat, and there's seven calories per gram of alcohol. Just say that again. Four for proteins and carbs. Yeah. Seven for alcohol and nine for fats. Okay? So, as a jokey example, let's say that macros didn't really count and it was just the calories counted alone, and I burn 2,000 calories a day, and I'm only going to eat 1,500, but I'm going to eat it all from caster sugar, I would lose weight. Unfortunately, that's not the way it works because your body has a requirement for a certain amount of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, okay? The brain will only run on glucose. That's the reason why when people go on a ketogenic diet, they, they, they tend to get a bit brain foggy at first while their body goes into a ketosis state. Because the, you're not giving your body all the sugars it needs that it would normally use to run over the top. And it's the reason as well why people that are, uh, they, they, <clears throat> they use their brains a lot for calculations and stuff like that. They tend to be sugar addicts because they, they, they're trying to fuel their brain all the time. Okay? Proteins you use for repairing tissue. Fats, well, they've got loads of uses, but the big one for me is they actually you use fats to make hormones in a roundabout way. You actually use fat to make cholesterol, which you use to make hormones, but if you don't have enough fat in the diet, you can't effectively make healthy hormones. Which is the reason why if you put someone on a zero fat diet, you will make them really, really unwell, right? But you can put someone on a zero carb diet and they will actually handle it, okay? So you've got to understand your macros. You've got to understand your requirement for those macros. Like I said, it's not about carbs are bad, okay? It's about understanding when you need them and in what sources and what works best for you. something that something is or isn't healthy, all right? That's got nothing to do with anything, all right? Fruit is healthy, but if you overconsume it, it'll make you fat, all right? Cocaine is unhealthy, but it'll freaking make you lose weight like that. <laughs> okay? Just because something is healthy or unhealthy, okay, doesn't necessarily mean anything in the grand scheme of things. All right, especially when, it's to, when it comes to your goals. All right, steroids are unhealthy unless you've got uh, an autoimmune condition or you're a bodybuilder and have to compete at levels where if you don't take steroids, you are not going to win. All right, you've got to have a, a, a defining line of you know where you want to fall. All right. 
is dropping down to 850 calories a day healthy? Probably not. But short term, does it help Peter out? Yes. All right. So keep your goal in mind. All right. And don't get uh, brainwashed by the thing of healthy or natural. That's another one. Okay. Pretty sure opium. As as Isn't opium natural? That's as bad as light when they spend yeah, yeah. to eat. Yeah. The word light. It's nothing. Yeah. It's a play on words. Play on spelling, actually. Yeah. There was a, I don't know uh, who she worked for, there was a food researcher a few years back, and she rang up uh, Flora, and she said, because she'd seen Flora light, they said, uh, I'm just wondering, what makes your product light? They said, it's lighter in colour. <laughs> not calories, not fats, colour. But consumers see natural light, yeah, low, low fat, that's the one. Right? You always try to find high fat food. Like, I should go looking for, like, I'm looking for the, like, you know, the label that said you can find low fat all over the place, but you actually can't find high fat cream, high fat cheese. And you've got to do your research and look at the back of it, all right, what's the, what's the ratio there? Yeah? A friend of mine was on a diet. She was diabetic and she went for a low fat yogurt for that was healthy and she actually went over on her sugar. Yeah, because the reason and the reason they do that is because you take the fat out of something and it tastes like crap. Yeah. So they've got to put something else in to make it taste better. Otherwise you won't buy it again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, number nine. Processed foods. Okay? Eating too many of them. Alright? Now, just so we're all clear. All right. Any form of cooking is processed. All right. So if you overcook steak, in my mind, you're taking all the goodness out of it. All right. Okay. You overcook your veg, you're taking all the goodness out of it. All right. It doesn't just mean what you buy from the shop in packets. All right. For certain things that obviously you're going to buy, like I buy gluten-free bread. All right. Okay. Making bread's a pain in the backside anyway, but making gluten free, I haven't got a bread maker, I haven't got the time, right? Okay? But if you keep your amount of processed food to a minimum, that's gonna be better for you because you're gonna retain more of the goodness in the food. And, it, and I, when I say that, I don't just mean the, the proteins, the fats, and the carbs, I'm talking about the vitamins and minerals present within those foods, okay? There was, um, there was a study done on uh, food processing and you can actually buy the book, it's called uh, Pottinger's Cats. And what Pottinger did was, uh, he, it was a 10 year study he actually ran, but the, the, the biggest piece of information came out of two test groups, and he had cooked versus raw food cats. So he fed one group of cats raw milk and raw meat, and he fed another group of cats, and then there were several generations, so it wasn't just like a cat, it was the cat and the cat's kids, and the cat, cat's kids, kids, and the cat's kids, 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 kids. And they had the cooked food, so processed milk and uh, cooked meat. And then they had different divergence of the cooked group. So they had uh, skimmed, full fat, condensed, sweetened milk so they were feeding them. And the more processed the meat and the milk, the quicker the health of the animals actually declined. All right, now the raw food, raw meat, raw, milk animals live, their, their test group, they were able to reproduce and reproduce and reproduce. But by the third generation, the cooked group animals, right, so we're talking about food processing, the cooked food animals, uh, they were suffering from uh, bone density issues, they lost the ability to land on their feet, you know, you take a cat and you drop it and upside and it turn itself and land on its feet, they lost that ability, right? Uh, they were having teeth malformations and their uh, stillborn rate rocketed. Right? What they then did was, because again this took years, right? They took out several of the cooked food animals at the third gen, I think it was the second or third generation, and put them on a raw food diet, the so raw meat, right? And I'm not saying that raw food is everything, but, but animals is a bit different, right? They cooked on a raw food diet and it took three generations to rehabilitate them, right? 
So the more you process the food, the more you denature the nutrients, and the more you take out the good stuff. All right? So that's why I like my steak red. Number 10. Do your research. Okay? Don't just believe. That says research, believe it or not. <laughs> Alright? Don't just believe every word that I tell you. Alright? Do your own reading. Okay? People come to me with information all the time and I'm like, I've never thought of that one. Okay? Jan is a, she brings me a, a, a news article in from, I think it's the Independent or the Times or something like that, on nutrition at least once a week. And sometimes it comes in and I read it and I'm like, you know what, that, yeah, I agree with that, that makes sense. And other times I'm like, mm, I'm going to have to pick that part a little bit more, all right? And I've got a logical brain, a very analytical brain. Sometimes it's got me in trouble, okay? But do your own research. And when I say do your own research, I mean find out what works for you as well, okay? It's not just about, you know, there's, there's I mean, 7 billion people on the planet now, okay? No one diet is going to work for them all. And the reason why no one diet is going to work for them all is because we all have different stresses and genetic potentials and preferences for different things. Uh, one of my mentors, he, uh, he's worked with um, a system known as, uh, what do you call it? It's a play on metabolic, metabolic typing. And it's basically you've got an equatorial based diet or a polar diet. So if you're further from the, the north or the south of the planet, or your genes are, right? So if you're Icelandic in origin somewhere in your genome, you probably need more fish and more fats, right? And if you're more down to the equatorial line, then you probably need more veg vegetation and more vegetables because that's your genetic preference. Okay, number 11, last one today. And this is where it crosses over, all right? Diet not matching your training. Okay? So you come to the gym and you have a heavy arm session. <laughs> okay? You're not going to burn that many calories training arms. Alright? You come in and you do an hour of hit. Alright? You're going to burn a lot more calories than you would if you trained arms. Alright? Now, depending on what you're putting back in and what you're rewarding your body with, etc., then you might want or need more or less or you know and that's proteins fats and carbs so the macronutrient requirements will change a little bit all right but if you don't match what you're training uh, your diet with your training it can skew with your results all right so i'll give you an example a few months ago when we got the in-body did my scan did start doing my training program and i was eating the same thing every week then i redid my scan four weeks later and i was like the differences weren't that much i was like right okay I need to, I'm obviously not ticking a box somewhere, so I increased my protein intake, all right? Thought the carbs and fats where they were, and I just increased my protein intake. Four weeks, I kept the training program the same. Next week, next uh, next four weeks, the results were better, okay? If you're not assessing, you're guessing, all right? It can be hard to, you know, stand on that thing or take photos or stand on the scales or be honest with yourself but you know i came back up holiday and it says you've been drinking and eating too much fat boy <laughs> <laughs> that's what it said right it basically said my body it didn't actually call me fat boy it said my body fat's gone but basically that's my translation for me because i'm harsh on myself right but what were i doing i've been drinking more than i i, I drank more on holiday this year than i ever have done Two or three mojitos out of four or five, six nights out of the, out of the holiday. I've never done that. Why? Because there was nothing to do in the evening and we were hanging out with playing cards by the drift, by the bar and the pool. Do you drink? Sure, why not? And they were free. Whereas normally it would be, you know. And the other the interesting thing as well is I, I get the impression that the food quality of where we were wasn't that great because we were eating and an hour, and I was eating a lot. And an hour later I was hungry again. So nutrient quality of what you're buying in will play a part on your ability to regulate blood sugar or stay hungry or not hungry or whatever. Okay? Okay, number one. Not 
tracking workouts? Okay. Just like your data, tracking your, your what you've trained and how you've worked out and you know and all that stuff is really, really important. Okay? So if you if you divide exercise into two big divisions, cardio being one and resistance being other. Okay, when people do cardio-based training, they use the either tracking how long they've been training for, so the amount of time on the machine, or and what level they're at. Or they'll stick to the same level and try and go a bit further. Or it's a distance thing. I'm gonna go a little not longer but further. Okay. And they're aware of that. Right? And it's it's a, an easier thing to be aware of because it's usually if you're on a rower for 15 minutes, then it's 15 minutes. And next time I'll do 16 minutes, so I'll do a little bit longer. But when you've done four sets of bench press, then you've got the amount of weight and your time and attention for the first set, the second set, the third set, the fourth set. And you might have 10 exercises. So now all of a sudden you've got 40 pieces of information to actually remember, as opposed to a rower, a treadmill, a cross trainer, and a bike, right? Now, when it comes to resistance work, where we, uh, where we measure progress with resistance work is in the tonnage, all right? So the tonnage is how much weight you lifted for that workout, right? So let's just, let's say, take the, the deadlift, we will have deadlifts at some point, right? And on your first set, we'll, and we'll use easy math numbers, right? You use, you use 100, you do 100 kilos for 10 reps. And your second set, you do 100 kilos for 10 reps. Third set, 100 kilos for 10 reps, 10 reps, right? So that's 4,000 kilos, right? There's your touch for that one exercise, right? But if you don't track that, then how do you know if you're progressing or not, right? Because Inevitably, chances are you're probably not going to go 10, 10, 10, 10. You might go 10, 10, 9, 9. And if you do go 10, 10, 10, 10, then it's too light. Because <laughs> you should be getting tired as you go on, not stronger. All right? So just like tracking your food, tracking your workouts is important. And it's important because the, 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 next, the next thing ties in with this, all right? All right, so this is number one. Number two is not increasing your weights or distance. Right, but weights are the big one. Suppose people do resistance work. Okay. So the uh, the other week, I was to apply, and he said, "I'm not getting any stronger." And I went, "I know." He went, well, why are you up? And I went, I know. Do you look the way up? No. All right, why? It's because it's too heavy. So no, it's not. All right? How do we get stronger? Anybody? By working. By, by working harder. harder. What does that mean? Lifting heavier. By lifting heavier. Right. If you don't put the weight up, why would you get stronger? So you do 100 kilos, 10 reps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the next week you come back. One, two, three, four, five, same way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the next week you come back. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, you're getting very good at doing the 100 kilos, but you're not going to get any fucking stronger. You're not putting any more weight on it. Right? Now here's the mistake that with, with this, people, uh, and it's, it's, it, I, I put this as an extra mistake in there, right? And it's increasing the weight by too much. But all you need is more weight, right? So if I put that on a, well, that's a kilo between the two of them, just so you know. If I put that on a kilo and you do 10 by four, that's 40 kilos more on your second week. And then the next week I go and get another half. That's another 40 kilos. That's like the third week. And if I go another half the next week, that's another 40 kilos. Well, how much weight cumulative have you lifted now from the first week to the third week, uh, the fourth week? 
160. Right, 160 kilos of extra weight. What's gonna happen to your body? You're gonna get stronger. Now, when you get stronger, what happens to your muscles? They become more increased. Yeah, yeah. Good, good answer, I like that, that was very good. Right? Okay, let me help you out a little bit. What do you think happens to your metabolic rate when you get stronger? It goes up. Guess what that means? You get to eat more. Not a lot more, but you still get to eat more. <laughs> right? Okay? Because the more weight you pack on those exercises, the more your muscles are demanding. All right, and muscles don't just get bulky all of a sudden. That's not the way it works, right? Okay, you, you, it's actually really freaking hard to increase muscle size, right? What actually happens is you turn on more muscle fibers, right? And you never have any more or any less than you're born with when it comes to muscle fibers, all right? Okay, making new muscle fibers is one of the hardest things to actually do in the human body. I mean, your, your training has to be so freaking scientifically precise because what you're actually asking your body to do is split the fiber and then thicken both of them, right? And that is not easy, right? What typically happens with training is the fiber literally goes snap, right? Not the whole muscle, just the fiber, right? And fibers are like microscopic, right? So the fiber snaps, the brain goes, oh, that wasn't strong enough, I need to make it thicker. So it pulls it back together again, rebinds it, thickens it, and it's harder and, and stronger, right? That's how hypertrophy works, right? When it comes to muscle fiber strength, uh, sorry, uh, muscle strength, right? What actually happens is your body snaps the fiber and goes, that wasn't enough, I need to turn on more muscle fibers, right? So instead of having 10 muscle fibers active, you've got 20. Now you're stronger, right? Well, you've got to create the stimuli. Have you ever been to the point where you've been shaking during exercise and you're like struggling to do something? That's your nervous system running down your body going on, 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 like turning on a load of light switches because it's trying to turn more activity up, right? So shaking during a workout, not from hypoglycemia, but from like, you know, str struggle is actually a good thing, right? You do it every single time. You a problem, but you know, on a, you know, on a, on a infrequent basis where you're really having to work hard, right? What happens the next day is you're sore. Why are you sore? Because those muscles that were not used to working have now worked, right? So it's like, imagine if I was to blindfold you all and keep you blindfolded for a week, and then say, right now, take the blindfold off and take you in. I took you to Crete. You'd open your eyes and go, oh my god, my eyes are killing me. Why? They've not worked. Right? Who's seen The Matrix? Yeah, the Matrix? So there's a scene where Neo was having all his plugs taken out and, and what have you. And he goes, why are my eyes so sore? He says, because you've never used them. Yeah, because he's been in his little pod in, a, in the machine world. Yeah? And funnily enough, somebody's, put a, somebody's created a meme on Facebook for this. It says, why are my muscles so sore? So sore? He says, because you've never used them. <laughs> Okay, you have to speed up because the class about to start. Right? <clears throat> okay, so not counting your tempo, right? When you when you're lifting weights, right, there's something called time under tension, right? So if I go ten reps or five reps, I'm gonna do it five. One, two, three, four, five, and I do the exact same five reps where I go one, two, three, four, five. That's one. Right, I'm holding the weight for longer, right? So I have a saying where the weight's only really useful to you while it's on your body, right? It's only, it's, only, it's only being beneficial to you when you've got hold of the damn things, right? So if you rush through it and put them down as fast as you can, it's less beneficial than it is if you keep holding them for longer, right? Now that doesn't necessarily mean you've got to do more reps, but you've got to slow the reps down. That's why quite often you'll hear me and the guys go, pause or hold it or slow down or, Try and take four seconds coming back out of that movement. Why? Because we're trying to prolong your agony. <laughs> For your benefit. <laughs> and our entertainment. <laughs>
Okay, number four was actually not increasing your weight, so I said that to you. Okay, number five, thinking that weights will make you bulky, right? As I've said quite a few times already today, it is not that easy to bulk up. Trust me, me and him know all about it, right? I've been trying for years to get like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And last time I checked, he was still 10 times my size, even though he's, you know, God knows how many years old now, right? Yeah, he's still in better shape than I am, right? It's a bit more recent, right? Okay, it is not that easy to bulk up a muscle, right? So do not worry about muscle mass, all right? If you're gonna pick weights up, there's a brilliant video, and it's this, uh, this, this, uh, this young girl and she's got this like two and a half kilogram weight and it says this is what girls will think will happen and she's like and she finally gets hold of it the second she gets hold of it the image changes and it's a, a, a big burly guy wearing the exact same outfit it's like no <laughs> right okay so get the weights up it's not gonna you know pack our muscle mass right if you think about the size of a kilo of steak Right, and you were to spread that, that, that you, you liquidize it and you put all of that kilo of muscle mass in your, on your body, how thin and how much extra bulk you'd have, right? It's not like you're talking about putting, you know, you said a kilo of muscle mass on one arm, that's a big amount of muscle mass. But if you put a kilo of muscle mass on, right, and you had it spread into throughout your entire system, it's not that much size, really isn't it? Yeah, don't no worry, we'll do this, we'll do this the last one and then uh, let you guys shoot off. Okay? Focusing on the small muscles, alright? So I said before about training arms, okay? Arms are a, uh, a show muscle, alright? Okay? So we're doing some biceps, some triceps. If, you, if you're going to do that, do it at the end of your workout and concentrate the bulk of your effort on your bigger muscles, especially when it comes to whether, whether you're trying to build muscle mass or lose fat, right? Or get fitter, right? It's the bigger muscles that are gonna drive more hormonal production, burn more calories, right? And get things working better, all right? And most people, when they, they, they feel weak, it's because they're either lifting more, walking, or you know, up steps and down steps and stuff like that, or picking stuff up, that's what it feels heavy, right? So you're gonna feel stronger, practice on the big lifts, deadlifts, squats, rows, presses, Okay? Because they're the ones that burn the most amount of calories. I need to make seven hours there and I'll on. <laughs> right, okay, we'll draw it to a close because you guys have got sessions and I've got a session and you've got and I need to grab some food before you it's fine. Enjoy that? Good. No worries. Okay, I'm gonna stay up and share this afterwards online, hopefully. And uh, well for you guys anyway.